What's up everybody, welcome back to the channel and welcome to another Pokemon Scarlet and Violet VGC video. So, today is going to be a bit of a different video. The other day I did a video explaining why Murkrow is good, uh, but today, I, I don't know what to call this. This is going to be sort of a discussion slash analysis of Hale um, early on in the metagame of Scarlet and Violet because, or I guess it's not Hale, like it's Snow. It's going to be weird because like, I don't know what the title of the video. Ice type buffs are like how snow teams are now viable like i was gonna say hail buffs or like how an analysis of hail in generation 9 but it's not hail anymore it's snow so yeah and honestly it's better but yeah we're gonna get into that later but uh today's video is gonna be talking about why it's different why i think it is just actually better and why i think it's actually a lot easier to run uh snow teams i keep wanting to say hail i'm gonna mess up by the way in this video i will mess up uh, but if you guys enjoy this day and play in time, do me a favor, leave a like in the video, subscribe to the channel, and turn notifications because I bring you daily competitive Pokemon content. Uh, and answer in the comment section down below, are you going to use any snow teams? Uh, yeah, I mean, like, are, do you think it's good? Let me know. All right, so let's talk about snow. So what was the difference between snow and hail? Let's actually go back to Gen 8. Um, here, let's do just do like, I, I don't even know where I look. Let's just do Gen 8. Um ubers sure why not so snow warning pokemon snow warning used to set up hail uh we had nine tails we had obama snow uh we had vanillux there were basically three pokemon with snow warning uh that you would ever see and i guess auroras too and these pokemon would set up the hail now the issue wasn't necessarily the ability snow warning as much as it was the mechanics of hail itself hail was a weather that damaged all Pokemon that weren't holding safety goggles, didn't have the ability overcoat, or weren't ice types. Ice types were the only Pokemon immune to this damage. Also, I guess like Magic Guard, but you know, it's getting a little bit too um into the weeds there. Uh, but yeah, so Hail would damage Pokemon at the end of each turn, and the only Pokemon that didn't take damage were ice types, which made team building a little bit restrictive, um, because if you were trying to take advantage of Hail without you know, having it uh, be a, a little bit detrimental to your team, you would need to run like overcoat Pokemon. So like, you know, and most of these overcoat Pokemon weren't actually that good on Hail because you had like a Scavalier, you had Reuniclus, uh, Kamoa, especially in Gen 8, these weren't all that strong. Uh, the Pokemon that take advantage of Hail were the Slush Rush users, which were things like Arctosult, which is actually fairly good, Arctivish, which was pretty okay. Uh, but Sand Slash was not good. Bear Tick is not that good. Uh, and yeah, like it was, it was just like a very like not reliable team archetype and you had to lean heavily into it it was hard to have a hail mode and then have things that didn't operate with hail because it it was like a very big commitment with very little reward fast forward to today we'd never have to look at gen 8 again uh and we have gen 9 snow so what's the difference snow is a completely different weather but it is exactly the same <laughs> no it, it, it's like the, it's a replacement hail just doesn't exist but snow warning summons snow if we look at the description of snowscape for five turns snow falls ice have or ice types have 1.5 times defense so where rock types have a uh passive special defense boost in sand while it also deals damage uh ice types now have a passive 1.5 times defense boost uh, but it deals no extra damage, which honestly, a lot of people were saying, hey, it might be better if it did deal damage still, but I think actually no, it wouldn't be. Snow now is valuable because it isn't at all a commitment for your team. In fact, snow is a very valuable weather because you can now, as much as you don't want to switch a bomb of snow in on like an eruption, uh, you can now set up snow and it removes other weathers and it's a completely neutral weather unless you have an ice type which gets that passive defense boost uh and that's really cool obama snow despite the fact that it is not a very good pokemon is actually super usable right now um and I, I, keep in mind when i'm saying this i'm not saying it's like a top tier pokemon i mean like you can use it which is just absurd for obama snow in generation 9 considering the level of power creep we've experienced in the past few gens so obama snow the reason it's actually pretty usable is you know it has a lot of weaknesses and stuff but if you just get off that aurora veil you know, coming off of 90 HP, 75 defense, 85 special defense, you not only have a reduction in uh, damage by about half and doubles, 
Um, but you also have the, hold on, it's supposed to be quiet nature. Uh, but you also have that passive physical defense boost. So now you're like eating close combats from like opposing Annihilate. You, I don't know, if you like intimidate an Arcanine, maybe you can even take a Flare Blitz because of like the damage reduction. Like it, it's, it's a possibility, right? Um, and like, we also just had better tools to take advantage of the snow. So while previously we were stuck using some pretty like bottom tier Pokemon, now we have Baxcalibur, which while it isn't like a slush rush Pokemon, it does have ice body. You would rather run thermal exchange though. Keep in mind, this thing has stats that look like this. 115 HP, 145 attack, 92 defense, 75 special attack, 86 special defense, 87 speed. It's already a bulky menace. That's 115 HP and 90, 92, 86 in your defenses. If you have a 50% boost in your defense with 115 HP, with like even a little bit of HP investment, like in the team that I uh, used in this, uh, in with the set I used on this team, keep in mind this video is going to be going up today at like 5 p.m. Uh, where I show you how I built this team, but like this thing is like very difficult to KO uh, with physical moves. Uh, Flare Blitz is despite doing like neutral damage versus Backscalibur, uh, they're not only going to bounce off of this thing, but also boost its attack stats. So now we have like a really good snow abuser. It, it's like a good Pokemon that, you know, it just operates under the snow. So Titan is another excellent example. Slush Rush is uh, a lot better without hail now because uh, the snow is not only going to double its speed, but it's also going to give it that passive 50% boost in defense. So it's almost like every Pokemon that has a snow abusing ability, like snow, co uh, snow cloak or ice body or you know anything like that. Not only do they get like the passive recovery or like the passive evasiveness, but they get that 50% boost in uh, physical defense because most of them are ice types. So it's like it, it not only is running snow not nearly as much of a commitment as it was in previous generations with hail uh but also like you're just making everything a lot bulkier than it used to be i'm actually like thinking about using glaceon on a trick room team and while glaceon isn't the strongest pokemon ever like that 65 defense and the ice typing kept it from being all that great despite it having actually a really decent stat spread um it's actually probably going to be like decently threatening if i were to run like you know a life orb uh with ice body because you know it's actually like a really threatening pokemon now under trick room it can spam blizzards off of 130 base special attack with stab uh and it's going to be able to eat up close combats it's going to be able to eat up flare blitzes because it has really high defense with the 50 percent boost and that life orb is going to be offset by the ice body uh regaining a little bit of health at the end of each turn like that's a valuable pokemon avalug while i don't think it's all that great is now a, at least a little bit more usable because like in snow that body press is going to be dealing a lot more damage because it uses the defense stat in the calc uh you can see where i'm going here right like they just gave us every tool that we needed for snow to be a somewhat viable archetype and this one's more for singles but i guess i should at least mention it we do have one more move that sets up snow which is really interesting called chili reception um, and while I don't think it's all that great because Slowking is not that great of a Pokemon right now, it is a really interesting mechanic because Chili Reception, what you can do with this sort of thing is like, you can have like a Trick Room offense team where you have, I don't know, let's go with like Flamethrower and like, or I guess it doesn't run Flamethrower that often. Let, let's just go with like Hydro Pump, sure, because it has like Stab, like Hydro Pump Psychic, right? You can have like an offensive Trick Room Slowking and then on like the final turn of Trick Room, your opponent is going to want to probably like protect to stall out the trick room if you have like two very offensive Pokemon next to it. On that final turn, Slowking doesn't have to stay in. It can go for Chili Reception, and then the next turn Trick Room ends, and your Slush Rush Abuser, like Satitan, comes in and just starts KOing things with like Choice Band Icicle Crash or whatever. The, like, I, I don't know, it's, it's, well, I'll be honest, like Hail or Snow isn't actually like a super amazing weather. It's now a tool that, um, is just like saying that you have to like be careful when you're facing like i have never felt comfortable going into a snow matchup and keep in mind like i faced a lot of things like i played this game for a long time and i tend to play pretty decent against most archetypes but snow is like a it, it throws a wrench in a lot of situations because i think that hey my close combat's gonna ko a caliber and then under hail no it doesn't and then like my annihilate gets one shot by glaive rush uh, like it, it's that sort of thing and here's like the big thing right I've said it a million times in this video already but this is where I'm gonna like go into like the nitty-gritty of like why this is such a big deal but it's not nearly as big of a commitment before I would have to run like uh, a hail setter maybe two honestly 
um, a hail abuser, maybe a second hail abuser, uh, a Pokemon with like safety goggles, and then like one Pokemon that I'm just okay like taking damage with. Uh, otherwise, I'm at like a little bit of a. Otherwise, I'm kind of you know like just like ruining my own game plan. But here you can see I only have two Pokemon that explicitly operate under hail, and this team's been doing just fine for me. Like it's actually like usable. So the main game plan is I'll use like Indeedy Female, which now has Trick Room. It's a long story. Don't ask me about it. We'll explain it in the video that goes up at five. Indeedy Female now has Trick Room, and I have an Obama Snow. So like I follow me, and I go for uh, Aurora Veil with my Obama Snow, and then. The next turn, you know, I can do whatever I need to, but I can usually just follow me and get in Baxcalibur. Baxcalibur is now going to eat whatever hit. It's a clear amulet Pokemon incapable of being burnt. I go for a Dragon Dance. Let's say the Indeedee did get knocked out. Now I take a close combat from opposing Annihilate. Guess what? You know, it, it doesn't like do much because I have double 50% boosts on my defense stat because of the 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 Veil plus the, uh, the Snow. Uh, not only that, but like Obama Snow doesn't even have to operate with a Hail Pokemon. Annihilate is right here. It's a Pokemon that has the move Rage Fist. The entire point of Annihilate is taking damage and allowing Rage Fist to get a 50% increase uh, in power each time the user gets hit. That's a lot easier when you have damage reduction uh, from Veil. And this is like the big thing that I think is actually really cool about Snow is I, I like I guess Obama Snow more so than Snow itself. Aurora Veil is actually a really useful tool for a lot of teams because guess what? Uh, right now, Intimidate stocks are like way down. Arcanine usage, you know, it's still like one of the best Pokemon ever, but like uh, when you're using Arcanine, now you have to like keep all these things in mind. Oh, I'm going to lead off Arcanine versus their physical attacker, except, you know, while I would be able to switch in on a Garchomp, Garchomp's running Clear Amulet. Oh no. Uh, oh, hey, you know, I, I would love to Intimidate that Pokemon that doesn't run Clear Amulet. Let's say that they're running like a, a Breloom. Oh, that thing doesn't run Clear Amulet. Well, guess what? It's next to a King Gambit, which gets a Defiant boost, and it Terra Rocks, and it just annihilates Arcanine and uh, Gyarados to an extent. Or let's say it's next to an Annihilate. Well, now, you know, I, I guess Arcanine could burn it, but guess what? The Annihilate's going to go for Terra Fire because that blocks the, uh, that's like a really common thing that you use to block the burn, and you have the Defiant boost, and now you're getting like Rage Fisted. My point is, Intimidate isn't nearly as useful as it used to be. So things that have other forms of damage, redu uh, damage reduction, like Light Screen, um, like Reflect, and especially like uh, Aurora Veil in the case of our friend um, Obama Snow is actually like really useful, you know? So I don't know, like I, I wanted to give my thoughts about this because I've been using this team a little bit uh, today and like, and I realized that like Snow isn't really anything to scoff at. And I'll be honest, I think this is uh, an avenue that a lot of people are a little bit scared to explore. Um, what you'll notice is there, all right, so here's the thing, right? There were no snow teams in like top 32 of, uh, this tournament, or actually I guess there was one Obama snow. We can actually take a look at that really quick. Um, yeah, it's running Aurora Veil. Like in, it, it did pretty well. Like the, it was the Obama snow got 11th place. It was Sanvi. Uh, yeah, Sanvi is like an amazing player, but also, uh, they recognized, Hey, you know, Intimidate isn't going to be nearly as useful nowadays, so let's go ahead and just run the Aurora Veil. Uh, and, I, you know, I would assume that getting 11th place meant that you got a lot of value out of the Obama Snow. Like, that's a really cool thing. Um, I believe there was, like, a few, like, Snow teams, like, here and there, but Snow was super, super, super un underrepresented. Like, we have 66th place with uh, the only other, like, Obama Snow that I see here. Uh, and by the way, I'm considering, like, Obama Snow necessary for it to be called a Snow team. It's pretty hard to get Chili Reception or manual snow setup uh there is a third obama snow and yeah that's it so there were like a total of three snow teams right but one of them did actually manage to make like you know top 16. i think that as the format goes on we might actually see more players try out obama snow and try out like an ice type next to it for that um and they don't have to revolve their entire entire they don't have to revolve their entire team around it a Bob Snow's Bax Calibur is like a perfectly good combo, uh, along with other like super strong hyper offensive Pokemon. I don't know. I think it's an avenue that we should all be looking towards right now, um, considering that damage reduction uh, from Intimidate isn't really as good as it used to be. Uh, this is a, bit of, a little bit of a rambly video, but I wanted to get my thoughts on it. Uh, I think that Snow is actually one of the greatest things to have ever happened to the Ice type. I don't miss Hail whatsoever, and I'm really excited to see uh, where. Pokemon like Obama Snow find their place in the metagame, and I'm terrified for what's going to happen when Ninetales comes back.
because when nine tails comes back it's over dude it's dunyan rings it's gonna be insane but yeah let me know what you guys think in the comment section down below sorry if this wasn't the most organized video but sometimes i just need to have these like ramble videos you know let me know if you're if you like these sort of things you know but yeah leave a like subscribe and i'll see you guys in the next one bye